गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेंटी दैट इज सेल्फ स्टडी इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट डायमेंशन ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड वी टॉक अबाउट कॉन्टेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन देन वी टॉक अबाउट प्रोसेस ऑफ एजुकेशन सो इन दिस लेक्चर बेसिकली वी आर गोइंग टू talk about self study though you have studied it in which we two and in detail in which we three here i am going briefly going to describe the process of self study so i assume that you must have gone through all this process in which we two and which we three but briefly i am going to describe in this session so we are going to talk about process of self expression then we will talk about lower activities of self then higher activities of self so basically this session is going to give you a deeper insight for the self study so let's see so we started this which we course that everything is in the form of proposal so whatever is being said here is in the form of proposal don't assume it to be true or false don't conclude it immediately keep it open for you and keep verifying it keep it open and verifying it and whenever you verify it you verify it on the basis of your own right right on the basis of your natural acceptance so we talked about natural acceptance in which we two and in which we three in detail so there is this innate faculty in you which you can refer at any time this natural acceptance is innate in us is intact invariant is available constantly to all of us so because it is uncorrupted intact invariant so in this whole uhv course we are referring this natural acceptance again and again so once you verify on the basis of your natural acceptance then you may experientially validate it and live according to it the outcome would be a mutual happiness when you interact with human being and mutual prosperity when you interact with rest of nature so this is the process which we are talking about from uhv2 so i hope you are following it i hope now you are aware i hope now you access your natural acceptance when you take decision now you are able to see your feelings your thoughts whether it is naturally acceptable to you or not so this process is basically is going to help you in your self study and you can ask yourself which process is naturally acceptable to you a process of self exploration a process of self verification or a process of do's and don'ts you can ask yourself and many times i suppose many times you have asked these questions to you so again you can ask these questions because because we are trying to self study so self study means i am investigating myself i am trying to find out my innateness so whatever in this course uhv2 uhv3 or in fact in uhv4 is in the form of proposals and you have to verify these proposals on the basis of your natural acceptance so if you find that these proposals are naturally acceptable to you then continue it otherwise keep it open and take help of teachers what would be the outcome of living 
according to these proposals the outcome would be mutual happiness and mutual prosperity so if you investigate these proposals you will be able to find out natural acceptance which is innate in you and we when you interact keeping natural acceptance in the base you will see a mutual happiness while interacting with human being and mutual prosperity while interacting with rest of nature and this is what is our innate desire mutual happiness and mutual prosperity so for living a fulfilling life it is required to find out what is innate in you it is required to investigate you so investigation is required so i hope you are doing the things in this manner <clears throat> another formulation we studied for self study is to ask these statement to you so first you ask what you are what i am what i am means what is state of my desire thought and expectation what is actually going on in my imagination so you can ask yourself what i am and then you can ask yourself what you really want to be what i really want to be what is my natural acceptance what is my intention you can ask yourself so take a pause for 2 minutes and ask these questions ask yourself what i am what i really want to be if you find a gap between two if you feel gap while asking these two questions to you it means there is something in you at the level of feeling at the level of thought which is not naturally acceptable to you it means you are in a state of contradiction you are in a state of unhappiness so why this gap exists why there is a state of contradiction because what i really want to be i want to live in relationship always but what i am sometimes i am having a feeling of relation sometimes i am having feeling of opposition so what i want to be is to be in relationship always but what i am i have i am with both the feelings feeling of relation and feelings of opposition and this is contradiction in me which is going on that's why i feel a gap when i ask these questions to me so you have to ask this question to you you have to find out what i am you have to find out you have to discover what is innate in me so this gap shows and to fill out this gap you have to ensure these dialogues within you you have to ask yourself whatever going on in my imagination in my desire in my thought in my expectations are actually according to my natural acceptance or not so if you are going through this process it means you are self studying yourself you are trying to investigate your innate potential your natural acceptance so basically this dialogue also help you to study yourself so whenever you are in a state of contradiction whenever you are in a state of happiness unhappiness it means something is going on in you which is not naturally acceptable something is going on on your desire so one desire may be based on natural acceptance and another desire may be based on some preconditioning which is actually contradicting your natural acceptance so you can investigate yourself whether all your desires thought expectations expectations are aligned with natural acceptance or not if your imagination is aligned with natural acceptance 
it means you are in a state of harmony it means you will feel happy in yourself if there is something in you in your imagination which is contradictory to natural acceptance then you are in a state of unhappiness so whenever you are unhappy you can observe yourself or you have to observe yourself every time keep observing yourself at every situation every time ensure awareness in you and ask yourself what is my present state am i in harmony am i in contradiction just observe it don't react on it just see what is happening in you the more you observe the more you would be able to investigate yourself so the whole process is going to help you for self study so with this there are some points for self observation number 1 we have the innate potential to recognize what is right we are endowed with natural acceptance natural natural acceptance something which is innate in us which is a part and parcel of every human being it is invariant uncorrupted by preconditioning it is definite so you can observe this is there something in you which is uncorrupted which is innate which is invariant is not varying with time which is absolute so as we refer our natural acceptance we becomes self referential we become self organized so asking these questions will help you to investigate yourself asking this question will help you for a study a study of yourself so you can take pause for 2 minutes and ask yourself and see observe what answers you get whenever you ask these questions to you whenever you ask these questions yourself what answers you get observe those answers okay then we talked about this imagination in which we two in this imagination we talked about various activities like activity of imaging activity of analyzing activity of selecting tasting so whenever my imagination is based on preconditioning it may be harmonious it may not be harmonious if my preconditioning matches with my natural acceptance it gives us happiness if it doesn't match with my natural acceptance it does not give me happy happiness but in both the case whether it matches with my natural acceptance or not continuity is not possible so continuity of my happiness is only possible when i am endowed with but my imagination endowed with natural acceptance so if we see ourselves there are many desires we are influencing from others sensations and all these together makes me unstable what is the way to come out from this state the way is to explore your natural acceptance and whatever the state of my imagination my mind reflect in the form of behavior and work so if there is a indefiniteness in my imagination my behavior gets indefinite if there is a indefiniteness in my imagination my work gets indefinite indefinite means sometimes i behave with the feeling of relation sometimes i behave with the feeling of opposition this is indefiniteness so why this indefiniteness exists in me because of this indefiniteness in my imagination so if my imagination is not stable is not definite then my behavior and work would not be definite 
so why it is not definite because there are something there are few desires there are thoughts which are contradicting my natural acceptance so sometimes i start with the feeling of relationships sometimes i start with the feeling of opposition sometimes i start with the feeling of trust sometimes i start with the feeling of mistrust so there is a indefiniteness so once my imagination is governed by my natural acceptance then my imagination all the activities align with this natural acceptance so i am in a state of peace i am in harmony so now whatever desire ex thoughts and expectation are going on in me if it is going on according to my natural acceptance i becomes stable now there are no desire no two desires which are contradictory every desire is aligned with natural acceptance every thought is aligned with my natural acceptance by this manner we my behavior and work gets definite so this you have studied in which we two so this again gives you a process to investigate yourself so once you start observing your imagination once you start observing your activities when you start observing your innate potential all this process will help you to explore yourself all this process helps you to investigate yourself then we studied in which we three about block b2 and about block b1 so in b2 you studied more activities in b1 you studied more activities in fact which we three talks about more activities going on in the self so when we talk about b2 it means we are talking about all these activities marked in the yellow color activity of imaging analyzing comparing selecting tasting and when we talk about this b1 we talk about all these activities marked in gray color so if we are not awakened in this higher level activities activities of block b1 that is activity of contemplation activity of understanding activity of realization then our desire our thought our expectation may be indefinite so to make it definite to make it harmonious awakening in the activities of the block b1 is required so if we are not awakened in these activities our comparison may be guided with only sensual pleasure health profit our sensation becomes unguided and we feel no balance in our life so once we awaken in these activities activity of contemplation activity of understanding activity of realization then our activities in block b2 gets definite and once these activities get definite then our behavior work and participation becomes definite so with these activities with awakening in higher level activities my desires get definite my comparing is becomes based on coexistence harmony and justice and my taste are now on the basis of goal and value too and outside my expression becomes get, get definite so you talked uh, you studied about realization so what is realization clarity of coexistence in existence it means there is a submergence of unit and space now i have this clarity as a unit i am able to see myself submerged in this space with the space this is a realization so once i have realization in me i live with authenticity
Similarly, with this realization, when I focus on unit, then I am able to see that there is a self-organization in every unit. There is a harmony in every unit. Every unit is self-organized. With this understanding, I determined to live according to this harmony. And I am also able to see as a conscious unit, I have also a potential to keep me myself in self-organized manner. So as a conscious unit, harmony also exists in me. There is something which is innate in me. And with this knowing, we become determined to live according to harmony. Similarly, when we focus on unit with the feeling of this submergence, coexistence, then I am able to see the relationship with other units. Now I am able to see that every unit exists and not only exists, every unit is participating in larger order. So with this now I am able to see my participation in the larger order. So once I have clarity of relationship, once I know about my participation in the larger order, then my desire, my imaging gets definite. It means now my imaging is for my participation. Now I am imaging for my participation. This way my desires become definite. Now I have no chaos in my desire. There is no two desires which are contradictory. Now my every desire is aligned with this participation in larger order. So with this definite desire, when I start analyzing, when I start comparing, now it is guided. Now my analyzing is guided. Now there is a base of coexistence, harmony, justice in me, which actually guides our senses, health and profit. Now these senses, health, profit becomes stable. These are self-controlled in the light of this coexistence, harmony and justice. So with this awakening in the activities of block B1, these coexistence, harmony and justice are awakened in me. And now I see the things from the perspective of coexistence, harmony and justice. In the absence of this coexistence, harmony and justice, in the absence of awakening in these activity, I think see only on the basis of senses, health and profit. But with this awakening, with the awakening of these activities, now I see the things keeping coexistence, harmony, justice in the base. With this, my taste becomes definite. Now I have also taste of goal, I have taste of values. With this, our sensations, our senses become definite. Now I am able to rightly use these sensations on the basis of this goal and value. So with awakening of the activities in block B1, my sensations, we get direction for the right utilization of sensations. We get direction to analyze the things on the basis of coexistence, harmony and justice. With this, when I select things outside, it ensures mutual happiness in behavior. It ensures mutual prosperity with rest of nature and it ensures participation in larger order. So this is another way to self study. So if I am asked, if I am observing my higher level activities, if I am making effort to awake my high level acti activities, the more I make effort, the more I get stabilized. <clears throat> so with this higher level of activities, these lower level of activities becomes guided. And my behavior work participation becomes definite. It means it is definite that 
I will behave with the feeling of trust, with the feeling of respect. It doesn't matter how the people around me are living. But my behaviors gets definite because now my basis is the activities of this block B1. So now, now my activities in the block B2 is governed by block B1. So there is a definiteness in B2. That's why there is a definiteness in behavior, work and participation. <clears throat> then we talked about four orders is innateness and natural characteristic. So what is self-organization in the four order? We studied it. We studied about the natural characteristics of four orders. And we studied about our natural characteristic that is perseverance, bravery, generosity, kindness, beneficence, compassion. And we also studied innateness of the four order. And we saw that this will to live with continuous happiness is innate in me. So with the study of these four orders, the study of this innateness and natural characteristic, I am able to see the units of the four order that they are self-organized, they are participating in the larger order. And once I recognized my natural characteristic, I am also able to participate in the larger order. So with the realization of this coexistence, our expression outside becomes definite. Now I am able to participate in undivided human society. I am ready to ensure this universal human order. So this is an expression of this realization within myself. So if we study all these activities, if we study all these block B1 and B2, so I my behavior, my feeling, my thoughts becomes definite. Then we also studied this formulation in the form of dimensions. We studied that there are four dimensions, dimension of realization, dimension of thought, dimension of behavior and dimension of work or participation in order. So we have written here block B1, block B2, block B3 and block B4. So B1 is this. So activities of realization, understanding, contemplation, determination, authentication is this. This is block B1. And block B2 is this yellow mark. So basically, block B2, we can call it dimension of thought. Block B1, we can call it dimension of realization. So when we are saying dimension of realization, it means it covers all these activities. When we are saying dimension of thought, it means it covers all these activities. With this, we talked about dimension of behavior, dimension of work. So dimension of behavior basically related to human-human interaction. It means justice. Dimension of work related to physical laws, the laws related to harmony. So if we study all these four dimensions, it means we become definite gradually. So this is another formulation to study ourselves. So we have to focus on dimension of thought, then we have to focus on dimension of realization. So with this dimension of realization, with this dimension of thought, my behavior, my work becomes definite. So we have to work on this dimension of realization and dimension of thought. So from dimension of thought, we have to go upward. It means this to this. So presently we are in block B2. We have to make effort 
to go towards block B1. Once we go to block B1 and return from this block B1, then block B2 becomes guided by block B1. And once it is guided by block B1, our behavior, work and participation gets definite, which is actually required for a fulfilling life, which is actually required for a harmonious society. So we have to actually make effort from imaging to contemplation. And once we make effort for this contemplation, gradually we understand harmony in nature. Then we can see that every unit in this existence is submerged with space. So once we realize this coexistence, once we understand harmony in nature, once we understand our participation, then our imagination, analyzing, selecting, testing, all becomes definite. So we have to make effort on these dimensions. You can start observing dimensions like dimension of behavior. You can observe your behavior. If there is no definiteness in your behavior, it means you have to work on dimension of thought. If you find that there is no definiteness of dimension of thought, then you have to work on dimension of realization. And dimension of realization is pure. So once you reach this dimension of B1 and come back to this dimension of B2 and then B3 and then B4, then you are able to ensure mutual happiness with human being and mutual prosperity with the rest of nature. So that's all for the process of self-study. That's all for this lecture. I hope you have revised all the things which you studied in UHV2 and UHV3. So now let's meet in lecture, next lecture and then have a good day and best wishes. Thank you very much.